I will speak about fair divisions and envy-free divisions. And let me start with the formulation. So imagine that there are R robots and they stole a necklace. A necklace is just a segment which we denote by the letter I. And the necklace is loaded by precious stones. So there are some stones, uh, so usually stones are some discrete objects. But let us skip this discrete formulation and pass immediately to the situation where the stones are represented by some measures. So it is a segment which is loaded by certain measures. So there are n measures, n measures. mu1, etc., mu n, and I assume that they are continuous, meaning that no point has a measure greater than zero. So and it's difficult to draw measures, but well, so that there is a green measure which represents the emeralds of the necklace. There is a red measure which represents, I don't know what, and also some yellow measure. Okay, let, let it be like, like this. And so the robots want to divide uh, the necklace fairly. So what does mean a fair division? Fair division. This means that one should cut the, the necklace into pieces. And then uh, the pieces are distributed uh, among the thieves. They are allocated in such a way that, that each of the measures is divided evenly among the, the thieves, among the robbers. So fair means the following, that I is divided into tiles. The tiles are allocated. such that each each person each each person gets uh, exactly mu i the total measure mu i divided by r so this is fair this is clear and there is a theorem Yes, the tiles are intervals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, there is a theorem by Noga Alon, which is quite classical nowadays, uh, which says that uh, no matter how the measures are distributed, or in other words, no matter how many precious stones are there on the necklace, uh, if these two numbers, n, and R are fixed, N and R, then it is always possible to perform a fair division using exactly uh, R minus one times, times N cuts. Allow a fair division. And this bound is exact because a very simple example shows that smaller number of cuts uh, sometimes does not suffice. Okay, so, so in other words, so the, here are the robots that cut, that stole together a necklace, and uh, the question was, what is the minimal number of cuts with, which allows a fair division? And the answer is that one. So, okay, uh, let me speak now about another, some other topic, which is called envy-free division. This is also an old story which has uh, deep applications to economics. And uh, I will tell, <laughs> so if the story starts the same way. So there are our robbers, our robbers, who stole a necklace. 
Well, in reality, if you read papers about NV3 division, the narration is different. They are, they are not robbers. They are our friends and who gather to celebrate someone's birthday. And there is no necklace. Uh, <laughs> well, well, yes, exactly. But there is a birthday cake, uh, which is surprisingly one-dimensional birthday cake. Or you can imagine that it is very, maybe three-dimensional, but very long. So it is allowed to cut the birthday cake only by such, uh, this way as I depict. So more or less it is the same as, as here. So by this reason, I eliminate this picture. Okay, but uh, now, so it's this psychologically motivated uh, formulation, psychologically motivation pro motivated problem. So here in this setting, all the robbers are one and the same. They all want more or less one and the same. You see, this is fair division. And here these robbers, each of them has its own pers personality. And they want some different, they probably they prefer some different things. Probably one of the robbers here would prefer uh, to get uh, more red stones than green stones. And, but, so they have all, each of them has its, its, his own hidden preferences, collection of preferences. So now each robber, robber has his individual preferences, uh, which are not ruled by any measure. And let me be more precise. So this means that if we take a, a segment, the necklace, and if we cut it into R parts, so there are R parts, and we have R robbers, one, two, three, four, let it be four, four robbers, then each of them chooses at least one of the pieces, at least one, which is preferred. So this robber says, I want the piece number one. Maybe his preferences is such that he wants to obtain the rightmost piece or leftmost piece, who knows. And um, probably this robber wants also this or this piece. So both of them are equally preferred for this robber. And well, let us assume that this robber wants this, and let us assume that this robber wants this. Okay, so these are their preferences. So the rule is that whatever I cut um, the, the necklace into R pieces, each of them should prefer at least one of the parts. This means that if, say, this robber gets this piece, then he would, would, not, would not envy to other robbers who get the other pieces. Okay, now you see that if, if the, the preferences are like I have depicted here, then it is impossible to allocate the pieces to the robots in such a way that everybody will be happy. Because, because you see why, well, because, because nobody wants the last piece. And a theorem, which, which sounds like a, a kind of a miracle, miraculous, uh, this is a theorem by Gale, by David Gale, states that under very mild conditions, the NV3 partition always exists. NV3 free division always exists if. Uh, the first condition is the closeness of the preferences. Closeness condition. And the second one is that, um, well, let me, say, let me say the following, that sometimes you can cut a necklace in such a way that there appears a degenerate piece, a piece of length zero. Such degenerate pieces should be also taken into account, and the, uh, the condition says that the degenerate pieces, pieces, oh, I, will, I will write vaguely, are all, are all the same. 
So it is allowed for a person to prefer the generate piece. But if, if he or she prefers, just imagine it, if it is about a cake, a birthday cake, and then probably there is a guest who wants to lose his weight and he prefers not to eat the cake at all. <laughs> and then if he or she prefers this degenerate piece, then equally he, would, he should be happy with another degenerate piece. So the role of the degenerate pieces uh, is one and the same for degenerate pieces. It doesn't matter where this degenerate piece appears. Okay, so it really looks like a miracle, but this is true. This, this is Gale's, Gale's theorem. Okay, that, uh, and we free, and it is uh, always exists, and oh, we, the, 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 this and we free division requires r minus one cuts, meaning that uh, the segment is partitioned into exactly r pieces. Okay. And now, so it is a theorem which we proved together with my colleagues from Serbia. What, is, what was the idea, the leading idea? Idea. Idea was combine the both ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, how many robots in the wheel uh, are? Our robots, it is up, 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 uh, it's written up, uh, up there. How many measures in the setup? So if we input it, just the No measures at all, just preferences. And so, of course, sometimes preferences can be ruled by measures, but as uh, you can easily imagine that they are not. Okay, so our idea was to combine both theorems and see what can be done. And here is the statement. So uh, the stat statement is exactly as you could expect. So if there is a necklace, which is again the segment, if there are n measures, mu1, mu n, if there are r robbers, and if there is a collection of preferences plus individual preferences, then uh, with uh, r minus 1 times n plus r minus 1 cuts, uh, one can achieve both and with free and fair division. On the conditions that the closeness condition should be closed, closeness condition, and also that the generate pieces do not matter, so to say. So I will not give details about the second condition, but let me tell something about closeness condition. Uh, well, this is very easy. Let's assume that you have a cut with some with n cuts. And you have a sequence of cuts that converge to some final cut. Converge to something in the very naive sense. So the convergence of a cut means that, well, exactly as you, you can imagine. And so the, clo the closeness condition means that if, so these are cuts x, i's, this is what, x, x1, n, x2, n, and they converge to, I don't know, to a1. They co converge, okay, that they then co converge to x1, this converges to x2, etc. <coughs> and so if there is a person who chooses, who prefers, say, this and this for the entire sequence, then the, this person should prefer the, the same pieces in the limit case, in the limitation. In other words, so preferences can be uh, expressed in terms of some subspaces of the 
spaces, uh, subsets of the space of cards, and these uh, sets should be closed. But naively, you, you can imagine it, it like this. Okay, so this is what I said. This is the formulation of the theorem. Uh, and let me just write the names of my co-authors. It is Dushko Jovic and Rade Zhivalevich. And myself. Okay, and now I'm going to tell you the rough idea how it goes and what, what technique is built up in the proof. Because, so of course, of course I have no time to, to give details, but just to hint about how it goes, I think it is reasonable. Okay, so assume that we have n cuts. We have n cuts, and we want to, uh, to rephrase the statement of the theorem in some topological language, in some set theoretical functional topological language. Okay, assume that I am allowed to uh, make n cuts on the segment. Then each cut is encoded uniquely by the lengths of the tiles. So this is x1, let it be x2, let it be x3, which is zero, and so on. So each cut is uniquely de determined by these numbers. And what are these numbers? These are, this is a, 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 a tuple of n plus one numbers because the n cuts gives n plus one tiles such that, such that firstly the sum of x i's is one, the total length of the segment is one, and secondly each of x i's is greater or equal than zero. And now everybody recognizes that it is just a simplex, it is just the standard simplex of dimension n. So it's a very simple object, okay? Uh, and if whenever we have a degenerate tile, this means, so let me depict it. So this is a simplex. Uh, the, the, the generation of a tile means that we are sitting on the boundary of the, sim, of the simplex. Okay, now, uh, so the cuts are encoded, so to say, by the points of a simplex but the cuts are not the entire story. So after cutting the segment, we have to allocate the pieces somehow, so there are many pieces, much more than, than R. So you see the number of cuts is quite big. And now we, we need to allocate somehow the pieces to the robbers. And the robbers, they also have some numbering. Number one, number two, and so on. So it is an artificial step that we assign the robbers some numbers, and which, which plays a very special role. You will see how it goes. Okay, so when you, when you have just cuts and no allocation, then we have just one simplex. But with each, each separate allocation, so we, we take all possible cuts, and all possible ways to allocate the tiles to the robbers. This means that we get, so cuts, cuts plus allocation, all cuts plus all allocation, uh, they give us a union of these simplices, okay? But it's ju not just as a, a union of, on, of the simplices because due to the fact that the generate simplices uh, the generate tiles do not matter. This means that these simplices are glued along their boundaries somehow in some special way. So altogether, what we have here is a simplicial complex. Simplicial complex, which we denote by C beautiful. Well, that is it. It's, it's exactly as the dimension of the simplex. So this, these are the maximal simplices. The dimension is n, 
And therefore, the dimension of the complex is also n. Okay, and now we have the following situation. So we have the configuration space. So the, the proper name for this object is configuration space for the cuts and allocations because the points here, they are responsible for a cut and for an allocation. Uh, and we have a map from here, which is called test map. Uh, so what we have to check, so we take each, each, each uh, cut and each allocation and we, first of all, we, we need to, to check whether the measures are distributed evenly between, be, between the robber, among the robbers. And secondly, we need to say something about the preferences. Well, I skip how the preferences are also encoded in some functions here and uh, so this is a map which knows is the division fair and is the division NV free. And it, it sends it, well, I forgot what's the dimension, but let me, let me say it. It sends to the R to the power uh, n plus one times R, R, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And uh, so, Whenever we have a n v three and fair division, we get into the some diagonal which sits here. Diagonal is a fine space which I'm not going to specify. Just some thick diagonal which sits, sits here. And so, if we assume the contrary, then we Im immediately arrive to the following situation: that there exists a map from the configuration space to this Euclidean space minus diagonal because this is the essence of this mapping phi. So whenever we arrive at the diagonal in the image, this means that we have an NV3 and fair division here. Okay. Is this the diagonal of phi to dimension? Uh, it is the diagonal of, of, uh, of dimension on n plus one. Okay, this is homotopy equivalent to the sphere. Uh, doesn't matter which dimension, sorry. <laughs> doesn't matter which dimension. Uh, well, it matters, but I'm not, not going to tell it right away. And now we have a map, again, a map from the configuration space, which is topologically non-trivial, to the sphere. And now it is a situation where the group ZR acts here and also acts here. Acts here, and I also forgot to say that R should be a prime power. This theorem is true for prime powers only. Okay, uh, and then we have a map which is equivariant. The equivariance comes from the fact that it does not matter how we enumerate the thieves, the robbers. So it is a built-in property of this map. So we have a topological space and equivariant map to the sphere. And if you ever heard of borsuk ulam theorem, which says that there is no equivariant map from one sphere to a sphere of smaller dimension where this group is just Z2, then you could imagine that there exists a generalization of borsuk ulam to other groups. Uh, now we need it for the group ZR. And, uh, now looking at this space and the knowledge of each topology says that such an equivalent map simply does not exist. So we arrived to a, contra to a contradiction. We, we thought that uh, the image of C does not hit the diagonal and we arrived to a contradiction. Therefore it hits the diagonal and then we remind ourselves that the mapping phi is specially designed to test, to, to to grasp the envy free and uh, fair divisions. So this is more or less the scheme of the proof. And so once again, it combines two theorems. One is very popular in economics. This is Gale's theorem. And the other is, well, it seems like a toy problem, but there are many, many other papers 
which generalize this Alon's theorem about fair division. It is also a nice topic because there is a built-in topology and equivalent, equivalent obstructions and so on. So I, I think I, I should stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, can we generalize this even more to the case when pieces of the cake have references over persons? Pieces of the cake? Yes. <laughs> so the scale shapely oh, uh, well, stable, stable matching. Uh, the, the pieces of the cake have preferences. Isn't it, wouldn't it be the same? I don't know. I think <laughs> it's quite a deep result by Gale and Shapley, which he got a Nobel Prize in economics. That ah, you mean you possible. mean that there is a dual setting? Yeah, uh, yeah, if you introduce some duality. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, I never thought in this direction, but thank you for for your remark. Yes. <laughs> what about the topology of this left hand side's uh, it, A or C? Uh, so we need here the high connectivity of it. Its connectivity degree is bigger than the dimension of the sphere. Uh -huh. so That's how it goes. Uh, so you don't no. That. Well, well, there are many, many different ways of mm, some specifications. Not, not always. No, no. <laughs>